let's just go through question number one. It says John is a writer. So writer means an author. So John is an author. Fine. He entered into an agreement with Mumbai Publishing House, MPH. Okay, fine. So an author has entered into an agreement with a publishing house. It contains various clauses such as time limit within which the manuscript is to be given. payment of royalty of 10% of amount received by the publisher recovery of royalty amount in case of sales return revision in the material etc see in case of law it can be a corporate law or an economic law it is very important for us to understand the question uh, read it properly and then go through the answers because reading the question is very very important so now that is why i am reading the question very very slowly so the Uh, other has entered into agreement with the publishing house it contains various clauses okay so just time limit within which the manuscript is given payment of royalty recovery of royalty etc a revision in the material the agreement also contains a clause that in case of dispute the matter may be referred to arbitration at the sole discretion of the publisher so what is clear now the it is clear here that in the agreement which the publisher and the author has entered between them there is a clause regarding arbitration that in case of any dispute in future what will happen they will go for arbitration but but one condition is only at the sole discretion of whom at the sole discretion of the publisher that is your mumbai publishing house now for the financial year 1718 john who is john the author he received a royalty of how much 2.5 lakhs now for the next financial year that is 1819 what happened the syllabus of management subject was changed and the author wrote manuscript for the second edition why because the syllabus has changed and he wrote another edition of the same book now so what so the statement of royalty for the second year so if you see here in the in the first year that is 1718 he received royalty of how much 2 and a half lakhs very good in the second year he received a royalty of how much 40500 only and this is a break up the table is a break up given by the publisher mumbai publishing house what he told royalty at 10% 185 and then he made some deductions what are the deductions sales return for future sales returns ex- expected and then he reduced tedious and he said boss the total royalty is 185 But I am going to pay you only forty thousand five hundred because of these these reasons. Now, this publish this uh, author is in for a shock now. Now, when John compared the amount of royalty which he received in the previous financial year, which was two point five lakhs, whereas in the next year the publisher paid the amount only rupees forty thousand five hundred. So the author was obviously in a shock. Why? Because he wanted to receive two point five lakhs, expected at least two two and a half lakhs. But he received only forty thousand five hundred. So now, what is the problem? So the question says, the author's arguments were: future sale return and royalty deduction cannot be made. See what the author is saying is: in if you see in this table, in this table is what the publisher has done. He has reduced forty five thousand as future sales return. Means in future, what sales returns we will have? He has reduced that amount also. So now, the publisher, the author said, all this cannot be deducted as part of my agreement. That was his first argument. And what was the second argument? The retail bookseller cannot return the book after three months. Then why the publisher has allowed or accepted the sales return even after the lapse of three months? This resulted in big deduction of sales return. So the author is saying, boss, after three months. You need not accept any return. Why are you accepting it? Because you are accepting it. Then what is happening? Then only my royalty amount is reducing. So these are the arguments of Mr. John, who is the author. Now, in the light of the provided facts, answer the following questions as per Arbitration Concession Act. In the absence of a separate arbitration agreement, whether the matter can be referred to arbitration? The question number one is: You don't have a separate agreement. to go for arbitration so can you go for arbitration that is the first question and the second question is in the contract agreement it was mentioned that in the case of dispute the matter may be referred to arbitration at the sole discretion of whom the publisher 
now whether the arbitration clause as written in the contract agreement is perfect give your comment so now this is the question which is given in rtp november 2021 now tell me does anyone want to say what can be the answer for this can anybody give a try so would is anybody willing to give a try to this questions question number 1 and question number 2 <clears throat> come on so now question number 1 it says in the absence of a separate arbitration agreement whether the matter can be referred to arbitration so anybody on this question can anybody give an attempt for this question i will open my chat box if anybody is replying in the chat any any attempt so just tell me yes or no i want at least a yes or no you guys have to make an attempt you have to make an attempt you may be wrong but that's okay at least try give a try okay i think somebody has so good morning aparna but i need an answer aparna what is your opinion on this so yes somebody uh, anyone kindly respond sir what is the question sir are you able to see my screen yes sir yeah if you see the question number 1 it says in the absence of the ag- separate arbitration agreement mm. in the absence of a separate arbitration agreement whether the matter can be referred to arbitration so can you go for arbitration in mm. spite of having not having a separate agreement is it possible is the question arbitration without agreement sir not yeah. possible sir not possible anybody else see you have to give a try you can be wrong but that's completely okay you can afford to be wrong here but you cannot afford to be wrong in your exam hall in the exam hall you have to be right you don't have a choice here you have a choice you can make an attempt if you make an attempt even if you are wrong you will be corrected here but in exam you will not get a second chance please take this opportunity to answer the question so now the question is in the absence of separate arbitration agreement whether the matter can be referred to arbitration now if you go back to the question now let me go back to the case law which is given here in in this case what has happened the agreement with the author and the publisher had entered between them in the agreement itself so if you see the fourth line here the agreement also contains a clause that in case of dispute the matter may be referred to arbitration so in this case what has happened the author and the publisher they have entered into an agreement very good and in the agreement itself they have written that if any dispute happens we will go to arbitration so now in this case if you again remember your arbitration and conciliation act the act said that the a clause is also fine or a separate agree- arbitration agreement also is also fine either of them is also fine so in this case if you see there is no requirement of a separate arbitration agreement why because the arbitration clause is given in the agreement itself so there is no requirement that you should have a separate arbitration agreement because in your original in your principal in your main agreement itself what you did you wrote about arbitration that in case of any dispute we'll go for arbitration so the answer for this will be what e whether the matter can be referred to arbitration yes the matter can be referred to arbitration why because the arbitration clause was very much there in the agreement let's go to the answer section 7 sub section 2 of the arbitration conciliation act provide that an arbitration agreement may be in the form of an arbitration clause in a contract so it can be either either of the form of arbitration clause or in the form of a separate agreement either of this is fine so now in our example it is in the form of an arbitration clause means i don't have a separate agreement it is just a clause in the main agreement further section 75 states that the reference in a contract to a document 
containing an arbitration clause constitutes constitutes an arbitration agreement if the contract is in writing and the reference is such as to make the arbitration clause part of the contract so it is clear from this paragraph that the arbitration clause is also very much fine or you can have a separate arbitration agreement also in our case law what has happened in our case law it is part of the original contract itself so yes they can go for arbitration so that's why we are saying in the given case the arbitration clause Clause was there in the contract agreement. There is no need to have a separate arbitration clause. It is sufficient if it has a clause in the contract agreement itself. So, how did I answer the question? First, we are reproducing the provision of the Act. So, which provision is applicable here? Section seven is applicable here. So, we have given the relevant provision of section seven, and then we have related the given case law with this provision, and we have reproduced the answer, saying that yes. they can go for arbitration because there is no requirement of a separate arbitration agreement because there is an arbitration clause already in the main agreement any doubts on question number 1 upon are you clear now is it fine yes sir yes sir so they can go for arbitration because there is an arbitration clause so there is no requirement of arbitration agreement now part number 2 so what is the question number 2 just see let's see the question number 2 question number 2 what we said whether the arbitration clause as written in the contract agreement is perfect give your comment so we have to just evaluate the arbitration clause what is given in the agreement so section 7 one of the arbitration and conciliation act 1996 provides that arbitration agreement means an agreement by the parties to submit to arbitration all or certain disputes which have arisen or which may arise between them in respect of a defined legal relationship whether contractual or not see what is arbitration the arbitration if you understand the concept of arbitration you will be able to answer at least something in the exam so first try to understand what is arbitration is arbitration same as litigation definitely not in case of litigation what happens suppose i want to file a case against you i will go to the court of law so now this is an alternative this is a resolution so we this is a place where we can resolve our dispute in an efficient way so how will this resolve the dispute in a this efficient way by going for arbitration or a conciliation that is this act of 1996 so now here what happens we don't go to the high court we don't go to supreme court we don't do, don't go to district court we rather appoint an arbitrator he is a mediator and who will judge our case okay fine who is right who is wrong that is arbitration so we don't go to a judge we don't hire a lawyer in this case so now arbitration and conciliation that means requires both the parties consent that we should consent that in case of dispute we will go for arbitration so here in the contract agreement the words written where the matter may be referred to arbitration at the sole discretion of the publisher so in our case now what has happened it is written that the matter may be referred to arbitration at the sole discretion of the publisher means they may go for arbitration but who will decide it is the publisher who will decide so here the matter may be referred to have been used and further at the sole discretion of the publisher these are the two important things we have to see it means that referring of the matter to the arbitration was at the sole discretion of the publisher means only the publisher can go to arbitration and was not mutually agreed on however although you have to understand that the other who has signed the contract agreement so the other has signed the agreement so he has read this clause and then only he has signed the agreement but the matter of referring was arbitrary that is at the sole discretion of the publisher itself so if the publisher do not want to refer the matter to arbitration so in our example if mumbai publishing house he does not want to go to arbitration then what happens then the author will have no option he will have to go to a court only so that's why we are saying if the publisher do not want to refer the matter to the arbitration then no recourse is available to the author except to move to the civil court so this is how we have to analyze our question given in the exam 
So the question says, you analyze whether this is fine. So what you have to say, you have to see two two clauses which have been referred. One is may be referred to, and the second one is at the sole discretion of the publisher. Now, when the original contract was signed, definitely both the parties would have signed the contract. When the both the parties have signed the contract, then it is at the mutual consent of both the parties. So now, who can go for arbitration? It is only the publisher who can go for arbitration. The author will not be able to go for arbitration. He can only go to the court and fight out his case. So this is question number one. We have two subdivisions, and we have gone through the answers. We have discussed the answer. This question number two. Let's see what is the question. Mr. Jayaraj Mehta, a stock market investor, had filed a complaint against Regency Securities Private Limited. So there are two parties. One is Jayaraj Mehta. He is an investor. So like you and me, we want to invest in some company. So we are Jayaraj Mehta, a stock market investor, has filed a complaint against Regency Securities regarding unauthorized trading, and the case was referred to arbitration. The arbitral tribunal passed the award in favor of whom? not in favor of us in favor of the company which is regency securities and this order the award the arbitral award was received by mr jayraj that is the investor on 25th of may 2021 <coughs> now regency securities that is the company or you can say the party who won the arbitral award enforced the said award on 30th june 21 What the meaning of enforce the award means? They went for arbitration. Now, when they went for arbitration, the regency won the award. So, regency won the case. Now, what happened? Regency went ahead and enforced their rights as given in the arbitral award. On which date? On 30th June 2021. How? By selling the securities of Mr. Jayaraj Jain to the bank account. So, regency securities is very happy. Why? Because it won the award. And it has enforced the award also on 30th June. Now, you the investor, he is very much upset. Now, Mr. Jairaj, after issuing prior notice to the agency, made an application with the civil court on 15th of July 2021 under Section 34 of the Conciliation Act 1996. He made an application to whom? To the civil court. In the said application, Mr. Jairaj. Complained that the award has been improperly enforced, and an application for recovery of the said sold securities was also made along with the main application. However, no stay application was made on the enforcement of order, as the lawyer of Mr. Jairaj told that there is an automatic stay on the enforcement of the award on filing of an application under Section 34. Now, so what is the question? In the context of the said scenario, please answer the following question. Question number one. So, what are the issues we have in front of us? Whether this agency company, whether what they did was right or wrong. So, whether agency can be considered to have properly enforced the arbitral award? That is the first question. Means what agency did? Agency won the arbitral award. It won the case. After winning the case, it enforced the award on 30th June. Whether that was right or wrong is the question. What is the question number two? Now, whether the contention of lawyer of Mr. Jairaj is correct means our lawyer said this is an automatic stay on the award. Means when you challenge the award, this is an automatic stay on the award was the contention of the lawyer of Mr. Jairaj. Whether that is right or not is the second question. Now, can anybody give, try giving an answer for this question? Question number one: Whether Regency is correct or not? What they did is correct or not? By enforcing the award on 30th June, they did right or wrong? Simple yes or no. I want. Just assume it's a uh, multiple choice question in your exam, or it's a true or false. You will say yes or no. What is your answer? Whether agency, what they did on 30th June is right or wrong? Guys, I need you to participate. If you participate, you will learn. Otherwise, you, how will you frame an opinion in the exam? you are not able to frame an opinion now how will you frame an opinion in the exam it will be very very tough please take an attempt please make an attempt i think it will be correct so what regency has done is correct okay anybody else i need more participation 
அப்பர்ணா புவனேஸ்வரி yes or no very simple question you can just you can even uh, take a guess here but make an opinion try to make an opinion yes no what did it is right or wrong the regency secretaries has uh, properly enforced the arbitral award so has properly enforced okay very good anybody else i am not expecting the right answer i am expecting an answer it can be a wrong answer it can be a right answer that's not a problem but i need an answer so that i will be at least convinced that you have made an opinion then you may realize that your opinion was wrong but that's okay then only you will learn it vanita gopal mishra anybody yes sir it's properly enforced sir it's properly enforced now <coughs> let us go to the answer you will realize whether the answer is wrong or right okay so now according to section 36 of the arbitration and conciliation act and it says when the time for making an application to set aside an award has expired or when such application was made but it was rejected then the award can be enforced so now in our example let's just go back to the question see the award has been made on which date the award has been made on 25th may award means the case the order on the case has been done on 25th may that who has won it has been won by regency security very good now on 25th may the order was given now this regency securities enforce the order on 30th june now if you see i am again and again insisting on the dates <coughs> and that means there is something very very important pertaining to the dates so now what has happened now let's see the answer so here it says when the time for making an application to set aside has expired that means in arbitration and conciliation act the act has given some time that once an arbitral award is made the party which has lost the case they can appeal or they can challenge that award and what is that time the time is 3 months so within 3 months of time we can go and go ahead and challenge that award so that's why if you see according to section 34 of the act a challenge against an arbitral award can be raised within a time period of 3 months from when the award is received by the party with a maximum extension of 30 more days by the court so basically that said that the order is given say for example on 25th may 2021 then this party can go ahead and challenge the award be similar to an appeal concept how you have an appeal when you lose a case in high court what happens you appeal against that order similarly in case of arbitration and conciliation you have lost the case So what it says is you can go ahead and challenge the order under section 34, but not for two years also you can challenge. No, I am not giving you unlimited time. I am giving you three months of time. Within three months, go ahead and challenge the award. Maximum, maximum. Suppose you are very lazy, or you could not understand the award. It took time for you. Whatever may be the reason, court can allow uh, an extension of one more month. so when the award has been given on 25th may 21 then what we understand then in our example the name of uh, the uh, the name of the investor is mr jairaj so now mr jairaj had time up to 3 months from 21st 25th may to go ahead and challenge the order so that is why we see thus the time limit for making an application for setting aside the arbitral award is 3 months and in the given case the arbitral award was received by mr jay rajan 25th may 2021 so from this date he has how much time he has 3 months time to go ahead and challenge the award so the time for making an application to set aside the said award was to expire on 25th of august 2021 that is 3 months until that time the award could not have been enforced as per section 36 of the act because the time is still there no doubt the award has been made on 25th may but the company regency cannot enforce the award for how many days for a period of 3 months which can be further extended by 1 month by the court so thus regency cannot be considered to have properly enforced the arbitral award as the time limit for filing application under section 34 to set aside the award had not expired see 25th may my order came and this guy went and enforce the award on 30th june itself so he didn't wait for 3 months 
he should have waited for at least three months, which he didn't wait. And that's why regency is wrong. It was having the right to enforce the said award only after 25th of August 2021. Or if the court had granted extension of 30 more days, then after 24th September 2021. So now what you understand from this answer that what regency did was not right. Why? Because it acted in haste. It went too fast. It didn't go as per the act because the act said, if you want to enforce the award, and if you want to enforce the award, you have to wait. How much you have to wait? You have to wait until the time given under section 34 to set aside the award. So the challenge was made on when, so the challenge was made within the period of three months. So this guy made a challenge within the three months. You should have waited for that three months to expire. And which agency did not do. It did not wait. So ideally it should have waited for three months. And if this guy is not challenging the award, then it could have went for enforcing the award. So now in this case, regency, what they've done is completely wrong because only on one ground, they did not wait for the respective time. Three months, they did not wait. Is it clear now? So what regency has done is completely wrong because they acted in haste. Okay. Now, what is the second question? So let us see the second question. Whether the contention of the lawyer of Mr. Jairaj is correct. See what Mr. Lawyer of Jairaj, what he's saying, Mr. Jairaj lawyer, he's very smart. What is saying? No stay application was made on the enforcement of order as the lawyer of Mr. Jairaj told that there is automatic stay on the enforcement of the award on filing of an application at 34. See, now what has happened? What has happened? 25th May order came. 30th June, what happened? 30th June, that guy, agency went ahead and sold the securities and enforced his award. <coughs> now on 15th of July, what has happened? On 15th of July, this guy has made an application to challenge the order. So this is, these are the sequence of events. Now, but the advocate of Mr. Jairaj, what he said, boss, no need for us to make an ap application for stay. Why? Because there is an automatic stay under the act. So whether the advice of the lawyer is correct or not is the question. So now if you see the answer, according to section 36 of the Arbitration and Conciliation Act, there is no automatic stay on the enforcement when an application to set aside the arbitral award has been filed in the court under section 34. So just because Mr. Jairaj went ahead and filed a case for challenging the arbitral award, does it mean a stay has been granted? No, a stay has not been granted. Why? Because the act is very, very clear. There's no interpretation here. The act is expressly told under section 36 that there is no automatic stay on the enforcement when arbitration, when an application has been made under section 34. So no automatic stay. So what we understand from this, obviously the advocate advice was completely wrong. So if you want to apply for a stay, a party has to specifically request for a stay and the court at the time for granting stay on can impose conditions. So if you want to apply for a stay, you have to specifically make an application for staying the application. Now, thus the contention of lawyer of Mr. Jairaj that there is automatic stay on the enforcement of the award on filing of application under 34 is not correct. It is completely wrong. So what will the court do? The court will order the Regency Securities Private Limited had improperly enforced the arbitral award. Why? Because it acted in haste. I already told you. But after the expiry of three months, Regency Securities Private Limited would have the right to enforce the award. So in order to behave, in order to have stay on that, a stay application needs to be filed with the main application filed under Section 34 by Mr. Jairaj as there is no automatic stay. So in the second part of the question, the advice given the, by the advocate is wrong because there is no automatic stay. If you want to stay on the arbitral award, you have to make a specific separate application to the court saying that you want a stay on the execution of the arbitral. Question number C. Is my speed okay? Should I reduce my speed or should I increase my speed? Okay, 
Now question number three. What is question number three? Party A and Party B entered into a contract for construction of a residential apartment. The contract contained an arbitration clause whereby all disputes between the parties would be submitted to an arbitrational tribunal <coughs> consisting of a sole arbitrator, Mr. C. There was a dispute in settling the bills of civil engineers involving a substantial amount, and accordingly, the parties decided to refer the matter to arbitration. Mr. C was now now comes the important part. Mr. C was orally informed about his appointment as an arbitrator when on first of June two thousand nineteen. So Mr. C was appointed and he was orally informed on first of June two thousand nineteen. Subsequently, a written appointment letter dated fifteenth of June two thousand nineteen was sent to him, which was received by him on eighteenth of June two thousand nineteen. In the light of the provisions of the Act, what we should do? In the light of the provision of the Act, explain the date within which the arbitration award shall be made. And question number two is: For what period can the parties, by consent, extend the period for making the award? These are the two questions. <coughs> Let us now go through the answer. Question number one is: Till what date, whether the Mr. C, who is the arbitrator, can make an arbitration award? So, as per Section Twenty Three of the Consolidation Act, within twelve state, months. Within twelve months, very good. So, the statement of claim and defence under the pleading before the arbitration tribunal shall be completed within a period of six months from the date the arbitrator or all the arbitrators, as the case may be, received a notice in writing of their appointment. So now, as we all are aware, the arbitral award has to be done within twelve months. So now, what section twenty three says? Section twenty three says the statement of claim and defence under the pleading before the arbitration tribunal shall be completed within a period of six months. So what is happening? The act is saying this process of statement of claim and defence. I will give you six months. So the statement of claim and defence under the pleading before the tribunal, you complete within a period of six months. So that is what shall be completed within a period of six months from the date the arbitrator or all the arbitrators, as the case may be, received a notice in writing of their appointment. So once they know that they have been appointed as an arbitrator, within six months they have to finish what they have to finish the statement of claims and defence. So now, if you see in our our question, the arbitrator, Mr. C, he received his appointment letter only on 18th June. Not on 15th June, not on 1st June. He received only on 18th June, so we have to count only from 18th June. So here in the given instance, Mr. C was orally informed on 1st June, but it officially got communicated by written appointment letter only on 18th June 2019, right? So accordingly, in the first case, arbitration award shall be made within 12 months. From which date is the question? So the date is 17/12/2019. By 17/12/2019, 2019, so six months from 18 June, and then from 18th June, from 17th, so six months from 18 June, so that brings us to 17th December, and from that date we have 12 months, that is 17th of December 2020. So the arbitration award shall be made within 12 months. So 12 months from which date? So after that initial six months is over, from that date you have to calculate the 12 months. Now. As per Section 29A of the Arbitration Consolidation Act 1996, the award has to be made within 12 months from the period mentioned under Section 23.4. Why Section 23.4? 23.4 is nothing but that six months which we are talking about. And then, however, this can be further extended by a period of six months on consent of the parties by the court. Hence, it can be extended up by up to 17th June 2021. So now. to just summarize what we have say seen now the arbitration award has to be done within 12 months 12 months of what 12 months of the period specified in section 234 so in 234 what is the time said it says that you will be given 6 months of time what 6 months of time to file the statement of claim and defense so first from that day that is from 18th june we have to calculate 6 months 
and from that six months you have twelve months of time. So this will answer your first question. Now what is the second question? The second question said, what is the extension which you can get? Twelve months time you have. Can you get an extension of this? Yes. The section twenty nine A says the maximum extension can be how much? Six months. So from this date of seventeen twelve twenty, you have a further time of six months, and hence it is seventeenth June two thousand twenty one. Any questions on this? Any doubts? So what we understand now, we have an initial time of six months. So the six months we will have to give a statement of defence, and from there we will have another twelve months. And from that twelve months, if the both the parties want, the court will give another six months. So effectively, what we had, we had six months in the beginning. Then another twelve months, then another six months. So basically, the maximum period was taken as you can take it as two years, six months plus twelve months plus extension another six months. Uh, extension again, it is the choice of the parties, right? So six plus twelve plus. We we'll move on to question number four. What is question number four? A dispute has aroused aroused between the management of Paris Furnishing Limited and its labourers. The dispute was to provide the basic facilities at the workplace, air conditioning environment, and hours of work. The management of the company sent an invitation to the leader of the union to conciliate on the issues raised by the labourers. The union leader accepted the invitation. It was decided between the parties that each one of them shall appoint one conciliator. In the given case, explain how the two conciliators. Appointed by each of them will address the matter under this Act of 1996 and the procedure of conciliation. This is again a very very theoretical question where you have to explain what is the procedure of conciliation. So now we have already know what is arbitration and conciliation. When compared to arbitration, is a very very simple process which is conciliation. So. <coughs> So let us see what is the answer for this. Section 63 of the Arbitration and Conciliation Act 1996 provides that there shall be one conciliator. So ideally, have one conciliator unless the parties agree that there shall be two or three conciliators. So ideally, have one conciliator. But okay, fine. If you want two, then you can have two. Or if you want to have three, you can have three conciliators. But again, the parties should agree for that. Now, how the conciliators are appointed? All this we are not going to discuss in this answer. So now, what is the process they will? What is the process they will adopt? Where there is more than one conciliator, they opt as a general rule to act jointly. So in our example, we have more than one conciliator. Each party one conciliator. So they obviously have to act jointly. Further, section sixty four specifies the procedure of conciliation, and what is that? Once the conciliators have been appointed, both parties are required to submit their statements in writing. So your viewpoint, you will submit. His viewpoint, the other party also will submit, and supply documents and other evidence to the conciliator. So each party will submit the documents, evidence, everything to the conciliator. The conciliator then provides a copy of the statements, documents, and other evidence of one party to the other party. Basically, he will exchange. See, in case of arbitration, it is adjudication. It means he will decide who is right, who is wrong. In case of conciliation, we do not decide who is right, who is wrong. We try to find a middle path. We try to find a solution to this problem. We are not here to judge who is right, who is wrong. We are trying to mediate between both the parties and try to bring out a common solution which is useful for both the parties. So, what these conciliators will do? What statement they have received from one party, they will give to the other party. They will exchange between them. The conciliator is then required to encourage and assist parties to engage in discussions based on the information to arrive at a settlement. So basically, what will happen here? They will not try to adjudicate here. What will happen here? They will encourage the parties must interact between each other, discuss with each other. So the conciliator is then required to encourage and help them out. Assist the parties to engage in discussions based on the information to arrive at a settlement. So this is the process of conciliation, much much simpler than arbitration, 
This is a complete theoretical question. This is let's move on to question number five. <coughs> Sham started a fresh juice shop and contacted Naresh for supply of fruits and vegetables. Most of the communication between them happened who happened over email. Very good. On the email, they decided that payment terms and other conditions of service. Very nice. For initial five months, Sham was regular in making payment to Naresh for the fruits bought, but later on. Stopped making the payments. Naresh, that is the vendor who was supplying the fruits and vegetables, he was obviously upset, so he filed a suit against Sham in a magistral court. But this Sham, who started this fruit shop, he contended that the matter should be settled only through arbitration. Now, referring to the provision of the Conciliation Act, please say whether the contention of Mr. Sham is correct or not. Now, I expect answers for this. Whether Sham can go for arbitration or not is the question. Yes or no? I want answer from everybody. Whether Sham can go for arbitration? Yes, my dear friends. No express arbitration between the parties, sir. Correct. There is no arbitration agreement between them. There is no arbitration agreement. Still, Sham wants to go for arbitration. Is it possible? So, arbitration uh, require a contract or agreement for arbitration. Perfect. Very good. Consensus ad idem. So, you need consent from both the parties. Correct. So, can Sham decide for arbitration himself? Tell me, at least I want the answers on the chat. The contention to submit the arbitration is not correct, sir. Very good. So this is Bhuneshwari. Very good. You are perfectly correct. In our question, the very simple question, Sham cannot go for arbitration. Why? Because in case of arbitration, it requires consensus ad idem. What is consensus ad idem? Means both the parties should agree that they will go for arbitration in case of a dispute. So here, they never agreed in on anything. So now, how can Sham go for arbitration? He cannot go. So let us see the answer. You'll get a better clarity on this. <clears throat> arbitration is a private method of dispute resolution. So generally what happens, if you and me fight, what we'll do, we'll go to High Court, we'll go to Supreme Court. Do we need to have an agreement that we will, if in case of dispute, we'll go to High Court? No. Under the Indian law, every individual has a right to approach the court. So, under the Indian law, how our Indian law has been framed, every individual, you, me, everybody, we have a right to approach the court for resolution of our dispute. That may involve infringement of rights vested upon that individual. That's why in India, so many cases are pending. Means, if you're not happy with somebody, if you're not happy with something, if somebody has abused you, if whatever it has happened, what happens? We immediately go and file a case. Why? Because it is our fundamental right. What is our fundamental right? Fundamental right is to fight for our rights. And hence, we can go to the court and fight our case. But arbitration is an exception. So this protection is so stringent that it cannot be contracted away. The Indian Contract Act 1872, however, notes an exception in favor of arbitration. So at one side, I'm saying you, that if your right is infringed, you can go to any court and fight for you. This is a right and this is how the Indian law has infringed. You can always go and fight for your rights. If your rights are infringed, you can go to the court of law. But then next to what I'm saying, arbitration, you cannot do like that. Arbitration, ke liye you should have consent of both the parties. Why? Because in the Indian Contract Act of 1872 also, it notes an exception in favor of arbitration. Why? Because arbitration is a private method of dispute resolution. Arbitration cannot happen without the parties consenting to submit the dispute resolution. Means, in the beginning itself, we should agree, yes, if anything happens between you and me, tomorrow we will go to arbitrator and he will decide our dispute. That, that's why we are saying 
consent of parties therefore is the most fundamental requirement for an arbitration to happen means consensus at idem an arbitration agreement records the consent of both the parties in the event of a dispute between them that matter instead of being taken to a court will be substitute will be submitted for resolution to arbitration means what will decide tomorrow if any dispute happens we will not go to high court we will not go to supreme court we will first go to arbitration we will go to arbitration and there we will decide our case so arbitration agreement therefore is necessary to start arbitration so arbitration agreement means it can be an arbitration clause or it can be a separate arbitration agreement anything is fine that is not a question problem it can be an arbitration clause it can be an arbitration agreement anything but there should be an arbitration clause or agreement without that you cannot go for arbitration so in our example what happened there was no arbitration clause there was no arbitration agreement between whom between mr sham and between mr nadesh but still mr sham wanted to go for arbitration it is impossible because there was no understanding there was no consent between both of them to go for arbitration that is why in the instant case there is no express arbitration agreement between the parties nadesh and sham as regards to reference of dispute for arbitration further mr nadesh filed suit against sham in the magistrate court but sham contended that the matter of dispute should be settled through arbitration here since no express arbitration agreement was made between the parties sham contention to submit the dispute for arbitration is not correct it is completely incorrect even the court cannot refer the parties to arbitration unless there is a written consent by parties by way of joint application or a memo or an affidavit now as you would have already seen our classes i would have explained the concept of submission agreement so basically what happens is the dispute has happened we don't have an arbitration agreement but after the dispute also you and me we can decide that we will now go for arbitration so that is after the dispute so mutual consent is very very important only one party cannot decide that i will go for arbitration it is impossible why because arbitration is a private dispute resolution mechanism right this is question number 6 so what is question number 6 mr raman raman garments manufacturer entered into an arbitration agreement with its regular customers on the supply of dress material on demand in advance so there is an arbitration agreement so there is no confusion here already there is an arbitration agreement at the same time also hold the term that in case of dispute they may refer to the arbitration for the settlement of the matter so if any dispute happens they will go for arbitration very nice very clear now raman garment manufacturer failed to make delivery of supply of dress material to mr x a regular customer so what happened mr x is a regular customer this manufacturer he was not able to supply the materials now mr x already made raman garment manufacturer aware of this important order in advance so this order was very important for mr x so already mr x told boss i want this order on this date on this time it is very very urgent for me it had prior intimation to the manufacturer now since this manufacturer was unable to meet the order on time he took the plea of theft and setting the fire to the property in the manufacturing unit so mr raman was not able to supply the materials on time he knew this order is very very important now to escape from this what he did he took the plea means he gave the excuse of theft and he set a fire to the property in the manufacturing unit itself now the same matter was referred to arbitration now the question in front of you is state the validity as to the submission of the said dispute to the arbitration in the light of arbitration and conciliation act 1996 now the question is whether arbitration is possible here now to read the question first thing what we have to see whether there was an arbitration clause or an arbitration agreement if yes you can go for arbitration no problem at all So if you see in this question, there was a clear-cut arbitration agreement between Raman Garment Manufacturer and Mr. X. So definitely they can go for arbitration, no doubt about that. But 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 
what happens is in your arbitration and conciliation act they have told that there are some types of acts which are not arbitrable some things for which we can go cannot go for arbitration so not everything is arbitrable <coughs> so now what is that now say for example if a murders b can they go for arbitration no it's a criminal offense was for a criminal offense i cannot go for arbitration so that way the 1996 act itself has told that there are some kinds of things which are not arbitrable itself so this question number 6 falls under that category let us see the answer as per the arbitration agreement the dispute submitted proposed to be submitted to arbitrate arbitration must be arbitrable means i am saying yes we both agree that we will go for arbitration but the dispute should be arbitrable boss that is the first requirement under the act in other words the law must permit arbitration in that matter only which are capable of arbitration <coughs> there are certain disputes that the law retains exclusively for the court means some disputes say for example murder murder you cannot go for arbitration for murder you have to go to the court only and the same cannot be submitted for arbitration the rational is given the nature of disputes the courts are only the appropriate forum for adjudicating the matter because if somebody murders somebody you cannot do arbitration you obviously have to go to the court obviously the lawyers have to come they have to fight it out and then only the adjudication will happen in the court of law right so in the given matter it clearly reveals of non performance of the duties of the raman garment manufacturer within the specified timeline to save god himself from the non performance he took the cause of theft and setting the fire in the manufacturing unit accordingly in the given situation the submitted dispute before arbitration is not arbitrable as they are in the offense of criminal nature so any offense which is of criminal nature cannot be arbitrated such type of dispute is to be tried by the court of proper jurisdiction therefore the submission of the dispute in the situation to arbitration is completely invalid it's completely invalid so this is the answer for your question 6 this falls under the category of disputes which are not arbitrable why because here it is a criminal offense and it has to be taken only to a court of law so with this we are completing our six questions planned for today i thank you all for attending